Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Aries EDC. So, this is another video sharing with you guys my collection. And on this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the knives that I don't want to talk about. <laughs> so, let's get into it. Alright guys, I want to talk to you guys about these three knives first. Um, so, this, this was... And I want to talk to you guys about these because these are like really early purchases. Um, so this knife right here, uh, at the time when I got this knife, this is the Buck uh, Bantam Nano. So it's kind of like a, just a keychain knife, back lock, uh, just uh, probably some kind of plastic handle scales, the back lock. It, locks in and you know it's just really it's a fun knife but at the time that I got this knife I was at my job part of what I was doing was I was in charge of all of the packages and all the ordering and all the supplies so I was getting packages in on a daily basis and I just needed something to open the boxes and the packages with instead of a pair of scissors or something but I worked in and around schools and I needed something kind of inconspicuous to throw in my pocket that somebody if they saw it wouldn't think it was some giant weapon that <laughs> would be going crazy so I bought this but I bought this because my boss had was digging through his this is a weird story but uh, <laughs> he he was digging through his desk and he found this old gift certificate for like a Cabela's or some kind of, I don't know, uh, out uh, sports place or something like that, um, an outfitter. And I was like, oh, cool. Okay. Well, this fits the bill because it's very cheap. I don't know, even remember at this point how much I got it for. That was almost... 20 years ago at this point but uh <laughs> i i picked this thing up and this thing came in so handy and i could just whoop, zip open boxes and just go crazy and this thing was my go-to box cutter it was awesome and i absolutely love this knife and it has a little bit of a following and I have just beat this thing to death. And uh, it just kept on going. And I really, really like it. So that is the story on that one. These two is a different story. So there was a time and a place where when you had your credit card, you earned points. And those points, the credit card company had their own store. Yeah, I don't, it's weird to think that it wasn't connected to Amazon or anything like that, but they had their own store. And I had not even thought about all these knives. Um, and I picked up these two knives using my credit card points at the store. And they actually had a K bar and they had a Boker. Um, and we're, I'm gonna talk to you guys about these knives in a second, but I just recognized those two names right off the bat. And I was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna use my points to buy these knives. I wanted something a little bit bigger. So that was horrible, but this isn't really something you flick out. So this is the Dozier Designs K-Bar, um, I guess hunting. And this is the mini version of it. Uh, it's a lockback blade and single sided thumb stud. And I think, I think the steel is, uh, D2, I think. I don't know. I got this thing so long ago, I don't even know what was used. And quite frankly, I had no idea what I was doing and didn't really care about steel at the point. But when I got it, I thought it was cool. It said K bar on it. And I knew K bar just from the, the big knives. And uh, I didn't even know they did folders. But this thing came out and I needed something small. <clears throat> maybe a little upgrade from my little buck bantam um, and so I picked up this guy and I'm glad I did it's a fun 
excellent knife. Um, now the lock bar is starting to show some age. It's starting to raise above the scales here, uh, but you know, it stayed nice and smooth. I can pop it out. It's a small blade, but it does everything it needs to do. It's very inconspicuous in the pocket. And it was a little bit of an upgrade of a box opener than it was the Bantam. <clears throat> and this one is the Boker Titanium Drop Point, um, which I have customized. Um, <clears throat> so I really didn't know anything about this knife. It's in 440C. Uh, and it was, I, when I bought it, I didn't know it was this big, um, <laughs> to be honest with you. And when it came in, I was like, holy cow, this thing is big. And still to this day, this is one of the sharpest knives. This thing, I don't, I don't know if it's still as sharp as it used to be. Let's see. <clears throat> I've been doing some cutting as you see, but, oh my gosh. Look at the curly cues on this thing. Look at that. And I, this is factory edge. I haven't done nothing since I've gotten this knife. It is laser beam sharp. And I have cut myself with this knife and it scares, and it scared me. I can't even pick this up. Ugh, okay, look at that. Look at that, it's a laser beam. <clears throat> so this thing was titanium. <clears throat> and I heat anodized it. So I cleaned all the scales off. I took a torch and I heated the titanium to get this texture. I don't know what happened there because I cleaned this thing really well. So there's just something was on that that did that. Uh, the other side, I got a little carried away with the heat and I heated that area up a little bit too much. Uh, but with this thing, the putting it back together part was something that I struggled with. Uh, it still is not 100% centered and I was very early in my customizing and everything else. But yeah, a little titanium drop point. And this is still, to this day, the only boker I've ever owned. I need to get another boker. I need to get some bokers. What do you guys think? I definitely need to get some more bokers. So this was very early on in the collecting. And then this kind of sparked the moving on to something uh, a little bit more modern with my knives. So let's move on to what was next. So the next thing that I uh, decided to pick up is I spent some money on a really kind of at the time, the most expensive knife in the collection, but it was because I wanted Damascus and this is the first Damascus blade that I've ever gotten and this is Sandmine Damascus so it has the core and I don't remember this is the hardened core of that blade and it was hand that the handle was handmade I guess that's what they had said um, I think this is a kit that somebody put together and then they put this blade on maybe I don't know it's a nice knife. It's really, really comfortable. Um, tip down carry, which is a little strange. And that's the only configuration on this that you could do. Uh, the liner lock is questionable, but um, it does lock up. Um, you really have to really pull it out to really get it to lock up. Uh, I have gotten that lock to fail before, but yeah, it's kind of whatever. But you can see the San Mai and that line going down the middle is the bright layer and that's the hardenable steel. So it has kind of an encasing jacket of Damascus and then just at the edge is the hardenable area that will give you your edge. So it's a very, very fun blade, uh, kind of custom and one that I just don't talk about. I don't know why. I just don't talk about it, but it's a really cool addition to the collection. Next up is one that my wife got me. Uh, she knew I liked Damascus and she knows I like blue and she just kind of saw this somewhere and picked it up. 
Now, I don't know anything about this thing and where it came from or what it is or anything, but it has all this milling and uh, file work back here. It's a backlock kind of traditional shaped blade. Um, Damascus. Uh, I, I, I don't know the quality of this Damascus or anything. I know she didn't spend a lot of money on it. Um, it came in, it's got the brass bolster and the back area and the liner and some kind of bone that's been dyed. Uh, this bet right here is really sharp. Um, <laughs> and the blade is cockeyed and weird. Um, so yeah, it's the grind is uneven. Maybe I, I don't know. Uh, but you can see the tip is crooked. So it has some issues, but my wife got it for me and that means more to me than anything else. So this thing isn't going anywhere. Uh, it doesn't end up in my pocket. And again, it's one of those things that I just don't talk about. <laughs> I did carry it for a little while. Uh, but for the, for those of you who <coughs> don't think I have traditional blades, this is kind of a traditional style backlock blade. Uh, there's no clip. There's no nothing. It came with like a leather sheath. But... I would just throw that in my pocket, really, is the only thing I did with this thing. But that is a gift. And the gifts mean everything, especially when it's from the ones you love. So very, very cool blade. So this one was gifted to me by someone who I did very much respect. Um, this was kind of my first case. Uh, I probably should have put this in with my antiques although it's really not an antique it's it was gifted to me in the early 2000s and this is the case uh i guess rust lock is what it is um i believe you guys will correct me if i am wrong i am sure and this was something that was gifted to me by someone who i very much respect and i've always kept it around uh just a little case double x um it has this blue bone, which I was very uncharacteristically, didn't really care about knives at the time and it broke, uh, but um, it was sharpened and it was something that I did throw in my pocket for a while, but I was, wasn't was really into knives at the time. And it just kind of ended up getting thrown in a drawer and forgotten about. And every once in a while I'd take it out and be like, yeah, that's cool. Um, but. Right now, it's kind of a knife that sits in a in a bag and uh, actually on my display with my other antique stuff since it looks kind of antique -y, even though it's really not. Um, but it's a fun knife that I have in the collection that I don't really talk about very much or take out. It gets in, it's in a glass case and uh, maybe one day I'll share you guys, share with you guys that case. But um, yep. Very cool knife and another one I don't talk about. All right, so these two, uh, this one especially, was one that I picked up because I thought, okay, I'm getting into the knives. Now this is my entrance into the real pocket knives. <laughs> oh, fun early times that we live. And this one was something I picked up because of the name of it. Oh, because of the name. So obviously, if you guys don't know, this is the Ken Onion Kershaw collaboration. And this is, and I always mix it up, this is the Chive. My wife has the Scallion and I have the Chive. Um, so nice recurved blade. They, they, these are just really great assisted opening. I thought, oh yeah, I got this thing in and I've been starting to get into knives and I was like, Oh yeah, that's so cool. And I'm, I didn't really know much about assisted, assisted knives. I just thought it fired really cool, um, which it does, but you know, it's assisted. So of course it does, but it's a, still a really cool blade. 
tip down carry. Um, <clears throat> I wish they did tip up, but maybe they are doing it now. I don't know. I still have the lock on mine. That tells you something. Uh, so I still have the lock on it and it's fun. I keep it, actually I keep it around here in the shop. Um, this was something I was contemplating on selling. I just don't have the original box or anything for it. So I still might end up parting ways with it. I don't know what I'm gonna ask. I don't even know what they're going for right now. I don't know the market, but this might be something I might actually be ready to let go. I don't know. And then I got this. This is the K-Bar Tegu. So this is another K-Bar. I really liked the blade shape on it, uh, that nice drop point. Um, it is just kind of a rollout liner lock type of blade. It's not something you really can, I guess I can reverse flick it, but it took a lot of effort to do that. Very thin lock bar, tip down carry again. Um, and it was a very inexpensive um, K bar. Um, the reason I got it was because it was called a Tegu. And if you don't know what a Tegu is, a Tegu is a type of lizard that lives in South America. And they're actually popular in the pet trade. And I actually owned a Tegu. So I got it because I liked Tegus. And I was like, well, it's a Tegu. I got to have it. And I picked it up for pretty cheap. And I've been going through cardboard with it and that kind of stuff. Uh, but again, it's just one of those knives that ended up just kind of going by the wayside and I don't know if I could sell it now that it, the blade's all scratched up because I can't, I don't think I could get those scratches out. Um, it's probably painted and I, I don't really know much about the steel or anything else, but I'll have to look it up and see if these are even being made anymore. Probably not, but the K-Bar Tegu, another knife that I don't really talk about. So the next two, uh, we all go through that stage. I started to get into knives, start searching around. I found this. Wow, that looks awesome. I need to buy it. How much is it? Oh, okay, it's cheap. Yes, I'm gonna buy that. <laughs> so this, whoo, we all go through that stage, right? So this is um, actually Usa Designs, as uh, our buddy would say. And this is supposedly 440 stainless. Now, I don't know if that means 440C or a different 440, but it's 440 stainless. Tac Force assisted knife. Looks pretty ridiculous. This is my only serrated blade I've ever had. I don't even like serrated blades, but I guess I was in that stage where I was like, that thing is bad. I got to get one. And I did. And then my wife talked me into getting her a pink one. So if you've seen the video that I did sharing her collection, she has the exact same knife in pink and silver. Uh, tip down carry, liner lock, assisted opening. And yeah, I mean, you can see why I don't talk about this. <laughs> and next up on the table is another Kershaw. This is the Kershaw Lifter. My wife got this for me for work. And she was like, you need a knife for work, something that you could beat up and you don't have to worry about it. And that's exactly what this was. Um, I threw this in my pocket. It's an assisted opening Kershaw. Got this recurved Tonto blade uh, that is not stainless because it's been rusting and everything else. Uh, if it is stainless, it's not a very good stainless because you can see all the rust and everything else. It is uh, tip down carry, deep pocket tip down carry. So at least they got the deep pocket in there because you can see it does have a deep pocket and then you're gonna go fall that all the way in your pocket. But you pull it out then you gotta flip it around and it is assisted opening. But this is kind of the knife that got me into fixed blades. The reason was when I was using this to open some of the materials that I have at work, all, all of this stuff was getting gunked up in the pivot. And this knife has a free spinning pivot. So I can't loosen that. This side just spins around, etc. So what I would did was I loosened all these screws 
and in here is the assisted spring and that all swung apart and I could clean everything out but it it wasn't easy so then I ended up getting my little fixed blade and everything changed after that so but again I kind of retired this thing because man it's heavy it's bulky it uh, is assisted and it's just not oh I can reverse flick it and it as long as it's good but man this is a full steel frame lock and man it is just a brick <laughs> but it's got a cool blade shape i mean that re taunt cur recurve tanto blade is kind of cool uh and it is full four fingers that's for sure and it was a beast it just became a little bit too much in the pocket and i moved on gotten some more quality stuff and then this knife turns into a knife that again I just don't talk about. All right, next up is another gift. My daughter got this for me. Uh, she wanted to get me a knife. She went to my wife, who's probably the worst person to ask. I love her to death, but she knows nothing about knives, nothing about what I want. And, uh, but it was my daughter's idea. They want to go to, to Walmart and pick out a knife for me. And she picked out this because I don't have anything in my collection that looks like this uh yeah okay that's i'm gonna leave that there i love my daughter but you know this this is a blade that i don't talk about it's an ozark trails uh knife listen they make pretty good stuff and some of their stuff is getting better um but it's just not something i really put in my pocket tip down carry liner lock some kind of plasticky material that looks like bone the brass covered or just anodized steel uh, bolsters uh you just roll the blade out nice shaped blade i really like the shape of that blade um and it comes down and it's it is somewhat sharp it is pretty sharp i'll give it that and it is smooth uh it's probably on some type of washer <clears throat> four fingers and yeah it's cool but because you know, my daughter gave it to me this will always stay in the collection but again <laughs> just a knife i don't talk about <sighs> where do i even begin so i don't even know where to begin but you have to, right? You have to. Come on, you have to. You have to. And I had to. So I picked up an Open L. I've heard all the things about the Open Ls. I saw how great they were and everybody was saying how good it is and you got to try it, blah, blah, blah. And I was at a market of some kind and somebody had a knife knives that they were selling and they had an open L this is an open L number six and I was like hey can I see that and I got this in my hand and I was like what in the world is this this is another dimension this is another this is something something different this thing is so light at that i mean the wood has got to be like balsa wood <laughs> but i know it's not <laughs> and the blade is so thin and it's got the carb carbone blade and it has the lock silly lock and all, you know all the things that we hear about open up but at the same time it's everything it needs to be and nothing more that's kind of like I, that's how I like to describe it. It has the nail nick that you have to pick it out, pull the blade out, then you take this, you twist it, and now the blade is locked into place. And it is very thin and very slicey uh, and somewhat comfortable in the hand too. But <laughs> it's it's just not not something I'm going to put in my pocket anymore. I think I've carried this on occasion just 
because and it's but they're fun so you turn it you do that you turn it again it's locked into place it's everything it needs to be and nothing it doesn't need to be uh, you throw that in your tackle box you throw that in your glove box you throw you just you always have a little knife with you and this is going to cut it, it's very slicey I have the factory edge on this thing still it doesn't have much patina because it just kind of sits around here in the case because it's an open L you have to have an open L you have to <laughs> but anyway it's just one of those knives you don't really talk about but you should because I forget how good it is in all the wrong ways but they are amazing well all right guys there they all are all of the knives that I just don't talk about and the stories behind them so I hope you guys are enjoying this series it's fun sharing with you guys again going back looking at knives that maybe I haven't pulled out in quite some time and just being able to share that story with you and maybe looking at some knives and saying you know what it's time to let it go and I think moving on I'm probably going to get to that a little bit more so that was the knives that I don't really talk about and I hope you guys are enjoying this uh, if you are please subscribe like leave a comment or not the choice is always yours have a good one guys